Yo, yo, welcome to Strangler School. I'm Josh Moody. Today I got my buddy Rudy, and we are going to be working on some flow pads today. Please hit subscribe so you never miss any of our content. We post things every Monday and every Friday. Please click the link below, go to Patreon, and consider subscribing. Uh, we'll be uploading special content to our Patreon members only uh, a couple of time, times a month. Today's technique, we're going to be looking at the dope mount. If you've ever watched BJ Penn fight, it's very high likelihood you've seen the dope mount executed. If you watch Damian Maya fight, there's a very high likelihood that you've seen the dope mount executed. And it's often used as either a butterfly pass or uh, can be used as a half guard pass as well. But today we're just gonna initiate it from more of a loose passing style and then we'll transition into a, uh, a very, very tight smash pass. I don't really wanna fight with this guy while he's seated. He's very mobile. It's much easier for me to defeat an opponent who can't move. So I'm gonna to look to put him on his back. I always wanna reach with my rear hand, okay? I want this lead hand here to be able to defend and dig for underhooks. If he was ever to reach forward and try and grab my leg, I wanna be able to get inside of that. And if I'm reaching with this, it's very easy for him to come underneath me. It's the same sort of thing that you'll see wrestlers do. I don't wanna spend a lot of time reaching with this near hand because I expose my lead leg, but I can reach with my rear hand and my near hand is still in a good position to defend anything coming at this leg, okay? So my rear hand is gonna reach out and post on his collarbone. My lead hand is gonna drop down and grab his near ankle, okay? I'm not looking for a cross grip. I'm looking for a straight ankle grip. I'm gonna push with my left hand, and I'm gonna walk him down as I lift with my right hand. His knees come up. My knees are gonna claim his knees. My weight is going to come forward to my hands. My hands are going to go above his head. And both of my knees are going to go to his chest. So my weight comes forward. My hands go to the floor. You see my head is above his head. If my head is behind his head, all of my weight is here on my toes. When I bring my, in, my head in front of his head, it takes the weight off of my legs, puts it on my hands, and puts it on his sternum. I'm going to bring my hips to the right. You see me leading with my butt. And I'm going to start to drag my left knee behind his top thigh and smash my knee to the floor. So I reach with my rear hand, my lead hand drops down to the ankle, I start to run him down, and my knees claim his knee. My weight goes to the floor, my head goes above his head, and as I bring my hips to my right, I bring my left knee behind his right knee so that I can land flat on the floor, okay? Very, very important that my knee is in between his two legs. From this position, you actually kind of have some time. I don't want to hang on here forever because if my weight is too high, Rudy can do a bit of a scissor sweep, his top leg can kick back, his bottom leg can come forward, and he can expose me to all sorts of leg locks. But as long as I keep my butt low, and my head down, it's very difficult for him to do those things. So I can spend some time fighting him here as long as I don't start coming up really, really high where I'm off balance. I stay nice and low. This is another situation where I don't really care if you have underhooks or overhooks, but I need you to be in control of them. Personally, I always prefer to attack with underhooks. Okay? So I have this knee right by his hip. My foot is down by his, by his knee. I'm gonna dig for an underhook on this side, and I'm gonna put my forehead to his chest. And then my forehead is gonna drive up into his chin, and I'm gonna make him look up, okay? So it's not really my forehead as much as it's the top of my head driving his chin up, and my forehead is gonna nuzzle against his neck like a baby to their mother. Their father, because I'm a good dad like that. So my head goes to his chest, I drive my head to his chin, and I start to drive his head up. I'm trying to make him look up. Not at the ceiling, but like above his head. I'm trying to pick his head up. And what that does is it pins his skull to the floor. And if I can pin your skull to the floor, you better believe your neck is pinned to the floor. And if your neck is pinned to the floor, your shoulders are pinned to the floor. And now how are you gonna stand up? You're not, that's the point. I get an underhook and I fight for an overhook, okay? I can also fight for an underhook. That's gonna work out really well for me too. 
But as long as I don't just like, hey, look, have this underhook and you know do whatever you want with it. I just this is this is my. I can even be out here, but this has to be my arm. My forehead goes to his chest. My head goes to his chin, and I start to drive, 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 drive until his head hits the floor. Now I need to drive my left knee back to open his body up, and I'm going to pull this arm up, and you're going to see my right knee hop over his knee. That's super important. If my knee is behind his knee and his shin is in here, I don't have anything. I got to get my knee in front of his knee. I want his knee behind my hamstring. Now my knee can go to the floor right by his armpit. My right foot is going to come into his thigh and my left foot is going to ride his hip all the way to the mount. I'm going to lock my head and arm lock. Head and arm control and move on to whatever submission you'd like. So I approach my opponent. I'm going to use my rear hand to post on his shoulder, my lead hand to pick up his ankle, and I'm going to drive him forwards and use my knees to claim his knee. My hands go to the mat. Okay? I don't want to keep my hands on him because if I bring my hand, head in front, I'm going to lose my balance. So my hands go to the mat, my head goes over his head, and now my weight's on my hands. I start to drive my hips to the right and circle my left knee behind his hamstring. My knee touches the mat. And hey, make sure that you don't have this foot up in the air. I need this flat. I want shoelaces down, okay? I don't want to be up high here where stuff can start getting stuck. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do with that, but I guarantee you I don't want him to do it. I know he's not doing anything to my leg right now, especially once I hunker down. I start to fight for an underhook. You can fight for a double underhook if you want, or you can just take that easy overhook. Don't start trying to do stuff like grabbing wrists and sleeves. Sleeve control is trash for something like this. It's so easy for me to hold his wrist and for him to build up onto his elbow. And once he starts building up onto his elbow, now he's back in the fight. Now if he drops to his shoulder and he, fall, and he falls to his back, he's gonna have some momentum to carry me with him. Okay? When he now that's a difficult thing for me to deal with. If he tries to tilt backwards right here, like he can't build his way up. So if he leans back, it doesn't do anything for him. Okay? Actually, if you uh, go ahead and lean back. If he does lean back, he gives me the guard pass that I'm looking for. But if I'm trying to control your wrist while I'm trying to control pass your guard, it's not going to help me. You're going to build up onto your elbow and you're going to have too much mobility and too much ability to off balance me. I get him all twisted up and I have my knee in between his two legs. It's very important that I have his bottom leg and his head in one straight line. So when I get in here, I drive his head away and if I can, I drive his leg away as well. Now I can pick this arm up and my right leg comes in front of his knee. My knee goes to his shoulder, my foot comes into his hip, and my left leg rides around his hip until I can get to the mount. Thanks for studying at Straggle School. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This time and every time, thank you for being here.